Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job uh, is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. I'm down the street right in Westboro. But this is not about my day job. It is about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've seen any of my presentations, you know that Frank and Mary, um, I talk about them a lot. They're my make-believe couple who want to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's in Westboro, they want to stay right here. They don't want to move away. So the point of this show is to help you, if you can identify with Frank and Mary, find out how you can stay right here. What are the, what are the things that are of interest to you that, would want, that will allow you to just be able to stay right here in Westboro? My co-host is Shelby Marshall, whom it seems everybody knows. Um, and, and Shelby is charged with getting these great guests and we have some terrific ones today. Shelby, whom do we have today? Yeah, well, welcome, Arthur. Always great to see you, and uh, very excited that this is our last show of the of the calendar year of twenty twenty. I know uh, of twenty twenty, but we're uh, ending it. It's done. <laughs> we're Wait. ending it on a a high note and a clean note, if you will, because uh, I have some great guests. Um, they are fellow Rotarians, um, Heather Abram and uh, Sherrod Mehta, um, and they are here to talk about a really cool initiative that the Rotary Club of Westboro has undertaken. I'm going to let them introduce it, but it's about um, cleaning up the earth and plastic recycling. So um, welcome, Heather and Sherrod. Thank you so much for being our guest today. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm going to, so, so, you know, you know, the basics, we sort of prep behind the scenes. We want to know what it is, how do folks participate and why should they care about this? So take it away. Okay. Let me share my screen. This is always the anticipated part, right? When this, oh. the technology. <laughs> right. So thank you, Shelby. Uh, my name is Sharad Mehta and I am the chair of CODE, Committee of the Environment of the Westboro Rotary Club. I have been a longtime resident of Westboro with my family. I've been living here about 21 years. And for my day job, I have an engineering background and I work at MIT Lincoln Lab. And my uh, I, I have joined uh, with me is a fellow Rotarian, Heather Abraham, who is the program lead for the Trex Plastics Challenge Drive, which we are going to talk about. Heather? Hi, my name is Heather Abraham, and I have been living in Westboro for about 10 years with uh, my family, our three children. And I'm very excited to be a part of this initiative that uh, Sharad shared with the rest of us. And um, my day job is I work at Staples, and um, in my spare time, I help out with the Rotary. And yes, so very <laughs> excited to be here. Great. Thank you, Heather. So this is a, uh, an initiative that we have started. Uh, it's called the Trex Plastics Challenge Drive. And our core team consists of three members, Elliot Rittenberg, who is not here right now, and Heather and myself. And we are going to give you an overview of this program. So. We've all seen uh, the pollution that is being caused by the film and bags uh, and plastics of that nature. And despite ban by many towns, uh, film plastics do continue to pollute our you know, oceans and waterways and landfills. And we see pictures like you see at the bottom of your screen, and we're basically filled with a sense of despair and helplessness. Uh, this is not what we want to see, but we also feel that there's nothing or not much we can do about it. So we have started this initiative, which gives us at a local, uh, at our uh, community level, to be able to do something to address this problem. And, the main reason that motivates us for this, uh, this project is that it's very difficult to make a business case for commercial re recycling of film and bag plastics because the material is distributed over a wide area in uh, homes and, and outside of homes. 
And it's very difficult to make an economic case of collecting all these materials and process them and make them into any kind of a business. So communities must rise to the challenge of taking this issue and collecting the plastics by other means and uh, taking them out of the uh, pollution cycle, basically. So we have started this program called the Trex Plastics Challenge. A little bit of background, Trex is a company that produces composite plastic material uh, products. And they have this nationwide program called the Trex Plastic Challenge. And what they're asking us to do as a community to collect 500 pounds of plastic, uh, film plastics over a period of five, over a period of six months. And if we are able to do that uh, and deliver to them, then they give us a park bench as a reward for the community. Now, the kinds of plastics that are acceptable are on the left side of your screen. So for example, produce bags, ice bags, Ziplocs, cereal box liners, bread bags, newspapers, dry cleaning bags, uh, plastic e-commerce e mailers, uh, even the plastics that you get uh, your products uh, from Amazon, uh, you know, the white bags uh, there and, and uh, you know, from, the, from the mail carriers, all those kinds of flexible plastics are uh, acceptable under the program. They should be reasonably clean, um, but not pristine. As long as they're not uh, soiled with food or anything. Um, uh, even slight food and grease is fine, but not large amounts of food, and that should be fine. Now, just to uh, summarize, uh, so we determined a period of uh, a start date for a six month period for the collection drive. And our goal is to collect a minimum of 500 pounds, which is equivalent to about 40,000. Uh, bags uh, of film plastic. We weigh and record them uh, and uh, report the collected amount to uh, Trex. And we deliver the collected plastic film to a participating retailer who has partnered with Trex. For us, this is Coles at the Northboro Crossing in, in Northboro. And we started this program in uh, on November, on November 7th. And in four collection events, we have collected uh, about 209 pounds toward our goal of 500 pounds. That's amazing. And thank you. And uh, we, this, the, the COVID situation uh, puts an additional link, wrinkle on, into the program because we are also working hard to minimize the amount of handling by our volunteers. And uh, so we are asking um, our, our community uh, members to bring the plastics directly to Coles at the scheduled times when possible, whenever, uh, if at all possible. This is a poster. Um, that was created by one of the Westboro High School students, uh, Abby Marr. And it's a very nice representation of the uh, a snapshot of the program. So uh, this is the uh, Trex uh, Recycling Challenge. And over here, we have the collection schedule, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. on these dates. And we are asking folks to bring their plastics in uh, large bags like this uh, to minimize the handling by uh, our volunteers. And we also have three satellite locations. Uh, if for any K, any reason, uh, some folks are not able to come to this site, they can drop them off at this, at, at one of these locations. Uh, and this is by far, but by far our preferred uh, option is to uh, bring the collection directly to um, to Coles uh, for for the uh, COVID situation. Now, some of the dates have already passed, and our next collection is due on Saturday at uh, 9 a.m. at Coles, 
And following that, January 16th and January 30th are, are the collection dates for the month of January. Uh, over here in the bottom, it gives a nice representation of uh, some typical samples of the type of plastics that are acceptable under the program. Now, so, oh, yes, good. So, go ahead. ahead. No, keep going. You're on roll. Okay. Keep going. Okay. So, uh, for coals, uh, this is uh, uh, obviously an aerial view of the Northboro Crossing. BJ's is here, Redmond's is here. And basically, uh, we have to go. Uh, uh, Folks should bring their plastic to the back side of coals over here. And our volunteers are, are, are waiting here to collect the plastics from you. And they weigh them. And there is a rear entrance. And we are helped by coals staff members. Uh, and we, pick, we take these plastics and put them in a trailer that is already parked here. Uh, which is a coals trailer, and once it's uh, once it's put in the trailer, uh, it's hauled away by coals to a remote recycling center where they get uh, similar materials from other locations, and then they combine everything and turn them into uh, press them into a thousand pound bales, and those bales are shipped to trucks, and that's wow. how this uh, flow of material works. Wow. Did you have a question, Shelby? No, I'm just, you know, it's amazing when we, um, when we talk about, you know, the, the process, right? The, the easy part is going to the store and getting the product. So I'm getting a bag of ice or I'm buying a box of Ziplocs or whatever. Right. But it always amazes me the downstream effect, no pun intended, of then what has to happen in order to you know, effectively, you know, reuse um, the, the, the product. So that, that was my sort of, oh, wow, um, you know, moment. So, so can I have, ask a couple? First sure. of all, first of all, this is great. Shelby keeps doing this. She keeps bringing in all these initiatives that are going on. You know, you guys, are you guys going for like the gold medal of like nicest town in the Commonwealth or something? It's just incredible. So a few questions. First, so where does it go when, once Trex gets it? Does Trex actually convert it into something, or is yes, it, they convert they don't send it, it to China own, or anything? No, right? no they, yeah. they convert it into their own products. As you can actually visit their website trex.com, and you will find a number of uh, products that they make from uh, composite materials. And so this becomes the raw material for them to be able That's, to make their products. Because I th I don't think that there's a more common concern in terms of things to be recycled than those bags right, right? and right. i and I, I know that well, so i live in marlboro and i know that one of the things we you know we they, people that collect the recycling but they say don't put those bags in right yes, yes. because they jam up the such and such i don't know right. how it all works right yes. so the notion of actually having a town-wide a community-wide way of dealing with this terrific Right. And, I, and yeah. when I was imagining, we have a rail trail that goes through from Marlboro to Hudson. These would be great benches on the rail trail, you know, right. to be actually. So it, it's just a great, just a wonderful idea. So, so a, a related question: Is this something that Rotary International is encouraging, or is this what a, a a totally homegrown that you decided to become part of this Trex challenge? So this is homegrown. Uh, the CODE is Committee of the Environment, which is yeah. a Westboro Rotary Club in, uh, group, uh, which is working on environment issues. But it is consistent with the inter Rotary International because this year Rotary uh, has seven focus areas. And one of the focus areas this year that Rotary Club has adopted is the environment. So it is very consistent with the overall focus of uh, one of the focus areas of Rotary International, but this particular program is basically uh, homegrown. We have initiated this as part of our Cote uh, mission. That's, ter that's terrific. And, and do, you, do you anticipate that if you have met the challenge that, that, you, that you'll do it again? Do you, are you, yes, or, yes. I mean, that, so that will continue in, in, 
Uh, Heather Baxi uh, talked more about it. She's the program lead, and uh, uh, she's extremely keen on on getting this program a, a, an ongoing uh, thing. So I let her talk to it. Uh, yes, yes, we're um we're hoping that this will just become a way of life for our town and hopefully spread out through other communities. Right. Um, I. We love the byproduct of having a bench. I think so many people, so many towns can benefit from that. Um, that could be the part of nature's classroom for our students. Um, there's so many places and locations we can use these benches, but regardless of that, we just want this to be habitual and something, you know, everyone, we go to the dump once a week or, um, do our recyclables there. This is just gonna be another stop and it'll be a part of our Saturday morning routine every other week. And I'll, I'll answer to that problem of all those plastics. And when you see those bags of plastics together, that's an aha moment. Like you were saying, Shelby, where it's like, if we didn't just collect these 20 bags here, where will they end up? And they end up in the ocean and we're just a tiny, tiny town. Like that's right. um, affecting a global issue. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, Sherrod, if I could just ask you, I don't know how many more slides, I just, um, just for our viewers, if if you wanna, um, if your the slide presentation is done, if you could unshare so we could see everyone's uh, face. I do have a few more slides. Oh, okay, okay, all right. Add. I have okay. a few more. Uh, it'll take a few minutes. Sure, sure. No, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure um, everyone kind of gets a chance to see you guys right. as well. Right, right. So these are the satellite locations for people who won't be able to uh, come to Coles for any reason. Yep. Um, one is at the central one, Federal Credit Union, uh, right here near the Rotary in town. And this is being hosted by uh, Dave Kaiser and uh, Rajani Kuduri. Uh, uh, this collection site. The other one is at the Y, the Burroughs Y in Northboro, and Betsy Moquin is, is uh, hosting that one. And the third one is at Midstrong on Lyman Street, um, the shopping mall. Yep. It is located between the Supercuts and the GameStop stores. And uh, Paul and Julie Riley are uh, hosting this one. Now, when we had started, we had very little uh, we, we had enough plastic that we could just put in our cars and uh, bring them from these locations to the site. But by now, there is so much plastic being collected that we are no longer able to, it doesn't fit in our cars anymore. Wow. So Mark's <laughs> Moving, Ian Desiato, who's the manager uh, of warehousing at Mark's Moving, he has, uh, he's also a fellow Rotarian and he has volunteered to come uh, one or two days before our collection date and pick up the material from these sites and bring them to Coles uh, for for this uh, program. You know, it really, it, it takes a community effort. I mean, we're, yes. we're just thinking about, you know, the, and I remember as Rotary being a Rotarian and seeing, you know, kind of the behind the scenes of rolling out of the, the logistics of this. And you think, well, you know, people are just going to put it in a bin and somehow it's going to magically happen. Right. It really takes all of these partners and connecting points of, so to speak, the train to make a project like this successful. That's right. That's right. Totally. Uh, we also have a sign up genius, uh, which I'll give you a little bit more information and, and uh, you can go to, uh, you can sign up as a volunteer and you don't have to be a Rotarian for that. Yeah. And uh, you send us an email and we'll send you the link to it and then you can sign up. You can pick the date and the time that you want to volunteer and you can do that. Uh, you can become a volunteer for the project. We have a large number of people who have helped us Kathy Wilford, our president, she's actually helped us find the satellite locations. And also she's uh, working on, on giving, getting us some funding for some of the items that are needed for the project, like waste scales and uh, consumables and, and uh, signage and things like that. Uh, Jason Committee is the chair of the service committee, uh, and he's helping us with the volunteering or getting volunteers for the program. And we've also had queries from other communities like the North Shore Rotary Club north of Boston has uh, shown a strong interest in this and they would like to start a similar program after watching us uh, in their own community. So we're hoping that this would 
scale up by other communities taking up and and uh, following the uh, uh, this example and and growing the collection even larger. Uh, We've also had a number of uh, high school, uh, Westboro High School volunteers come and help us. Abhi Mahar, as I said, produced the poster, which is helping us spread the word. And Kylie Valley and Mukil Nair and Sean Tam and May Abram. May Abram is Heather's daughter. Uh, they have all come to the coal site and uh, they have helped us uh, weigh the plastics and move them into the trailer. Uh, so we, we're really appreciative of the of their help. Uh, and uh, other Rotarians like uh, uh, Ed Babinski and my wife, Alka, uh, they're uh, working on spreading the word uh, in the community to, uh, to ensure its success. And we've also had great support from the Coles uh, staff. Samantha Hutchins is the store manager, and she uh, is very enthusiastic about the program. And then Shelby and Dana were our uh, staff members at Coles who, who also have helped us. Uh, we are looking for more volunteers uh, and not necessarily at the store, but also anything that uh, for, uh, uh, is done to spread the word uh, uh, in the community yeah. would be uh, would be a great help. So, Sherrod, if you could speak to that, just um, what what um, what are the roles of the volunteers? Just um, and we we do need to probably move the conversation along just because of time. What are the yes. roles of the volunteers once they're at Coles? Is that primarily where they would go? And what's the time commitment? Right. So the time commitment is just the one hour every other Saturday morning, nine a.m. to ten a.m. Okay. And basically, they would uh, collect the. Um, the plastics that the visitors bring and weigh them and record them and help us move them into the trailer, the Coles trailer. And okay. that's pretty much it. And the other help we could use is in just spreading the word, which can be done at home. And we're, Great. Uh, we have gotten a lot of uh, help, uh, which, which is really amazing. Good. Good, excellent. Well, a great way. It's uh, it's light lifting, right? No yes. pun intended, yeah. right? So, yes. uh, an hour of your time, you're helping the community, you're helping the environment. Um, yes. And we'll make sure. I do see that you have um, the sign. Uh, the The next slide here is showing us um, how to contact the um, Cote Group um, yes. as well yes. as to sign up. And we'll make sure that um, Aiden, our technology genius behind the scenes, will make sure to have these on the uh, actual screen so that um, folks can capture those as they're watching the show. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. So that's that's all I have, Shelby. Thank that's you. great. That's great. And congratulations to the two of you because because this is one of those, it's, it has a wonderful environmental effect. You know, it really answers a ton of people's questions about this very terrible thing, those bags, right, that we all use. And it's also building community. That's what's really special, I think, about it, is that it's doing it in a way that's actually getting people probably interested in in more stuff that's like this and making them people like people feel empowered like god i can deal with this you know right. i can actually well, do this. Great. right next to me here right i'm sitting oh, at my wow. my daughter's like uh kind of work school space right right yeah extra bags right now we do try to recycle them like we try to use them for other purposes but sometimes they get like kind of grungy and the little zips don't work anymore or whatever and the easy part is to just throw them in the trash and say ah, it's going in the yeah. trash but what we did um knowing this this challenge was coming up is we took one of our in-house recycling bins that we usually use for you know glass or whatever you know we're um and we just said we're just going to use that for plastic and it's amazing how quickly that's right <laughs> the plastic accumulates really like right. initially it was like this little ball and i was like well geez this is kind of a waste of a bin it really was like it was kind of annoying me that i was setting aside this bin and then all of a sudden it's like it's like stuff to the top so i'll be dropping that off uh, on saturday um, right. and, that's wonderful but, it, yeah. but it's amazing it yeah. is yeah we have a, a trash bin now just dedicated for plastics and it fills up quickly yeah. and yeah it does it also makes you think like wait a second before i put this in there could i reuse it right so right. so it has a, a dual effect um and then and even 
even just in terms of like as we were wrapping up the holidays, right? Instead of throwing stuff into a plastic bag to put in the fridge, right. I might be much more likely to use a you know a reusable washable container right. so that I ultimately don't have to recycle it. So it, it has you know sort of it, right. it makes us much more conscientious of things that we're not normally maybe aware of right. or need to be better about. Yeah. yeah. Like the bag version of Elf on the Shelf, you know, it's like every time you go by and you're like, oh my God, what, what am I, how can I be throwing this away? <laughs> so the main point, the main point of the program is really to generate this awareness. I mean, we, as soon as we start doing it, we all realize, oh my God, this is, oh God. Uh, it's amazing how much plastic we're using. Yep. Despite the fact that it's been banned by uh, so many communities, it still continues to be part of our lives. Right. Yeah. So this is just a wonderful, th thank you very much for doing this. It's okay. just, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful conclusion to an otherwise dreadful year to be seeing <laughs> that this positive thing going into 2021. It's just Terrific. And now, now Shelby, I know one of my jobs is that here is to be is to be the timekeeper, and I'm looking and seeing we're a little close on time. Sure. But but you know, once again, any any other things that you need to be talking about as the selectman in terms of you know stuff that's coming up, um, or are we just going to have people just wait with anticipation for our next show, which is in 2021. I'm going to just say, first of all, I want to thank everyone who has watched our show. Um, we, Arthur and I love doing it. The smiles you see are genuine. Can um, Can't they tell? Can they tell? <laughs> we, we love doing it. We're looking forward and planning um, uh, 2021 and, and kind of the, the our approach. So looking forward to um, having gr a, uh, growth in our, um, our viewership. I do want to let folks know that um, most important, you know, as a taxpayer, Budget discussions are underway right now, um, and you'll be hearing lots more about that as uh, through uh, selectmen's meetings and just uh, information on the town's website. And um, we'll certainly have a conversation here. And so, also, stay Charlotte tuned. And Heather, thank you so much. This thank is just you. great. Shelby, thank thanks you. for doing this. This is just a wonderful time. Thanks to you all. A very happy new year, 2021. <laughs> you know, vaccines coming, right? There you the go. Mask, maybe, you know, someday <laughs> we may be putting these masks away. Right. And so th thank you to all. And folks, thank you for watching. Once again, just you, you got a few more months. Vaccines come in. Don't do anything stupid. Right. <laughs> Get in trouble be before you're safe. We're almost all out of this. That's uh, right. Happy, happy New Year to Shelby, to you all. And folks, Happy New Year to you. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next show. The next installment of Frank and Mary in uh, Westboro, this one in 2021. Thank Bye you. Everyone. Thank you. Bye.